In this video we're going to continue with solving root equations and we'll just have five examples or sorry four examples uh, one on page five, one on page eight, six, one on page seven and one on page eight. So there's just these four examples. Okay. So we'll start with this one and um, it's a root equation because there's a square root in it. Okay. And let's have a look at our steps. So I hope you have those steps listed from uh, the last lesson and first of all we need to isolate the root okay so do we have the root isolated all by itself on one side this is the root it's all by itself isn't it there's nothing being added or subtracted onto it right okay next step we need to square or cube both sides now what do we need to do with this square both sides or cube, cube both sides that's a square root isn't it because there's no index written in there so we need to square that right and if we do this square on this if we square it on this side you know that works out nicely because hey it's just the inside x plus seven but we also need to square this side okay go ahead and write down what you think that is x minus five all squared uh, over half students make a mistake on that by the way over half the students I would have would make a mistake on that it's not x squared minus 25. That is incorrect. It is not x squared minus 25. Okay. And I'll show you why. What that is, if you expand it out, instead of trying to get the, if you expand it out, okay, the squared is touching parentheses. See that? So it makes it parentheses times parentheses. x minus 5 times x minus 5 doesn't it? It's definitely parenthesis times parenthesis. What happens when you multiply that out with the FOIL method or the double distributive method I call it? x times x, x squared. x times negative 5, minus 5x. Five negative 5 times x, minus 5x. Five negative 5 times negative 5, plus 25. If you add like terms, you get x squared minus 10x plus 25. Now, does that look like x squared minus 25? Uh-uh. This has to be expanded out and multiplied. If you don't do that, you'll get the wrong answer. And this would be the most common error. Uh, it would be most common to make a mistake on this. So if you get this right, then you're you're on the, on the way. So x squared minus 10x plus 25 goes there, right? And now we solve this equation. How about let's go ahead and just subtract x from both sides, one step at a time. Then on the left, we'll have x squared and now negative 10x minus 1x is what? You're in debt by 10, you subtract 1, you're in debt by 11, negative 11x and then we have plus 25 and that equals and now x minus x that's 1x minus 1x that's 0 isn't it so equals 7 right then subtract 7 from both sides and what do you get x squared minus 11x plus um, 18 equals 0 and I'm just I automatically went to get 0 on one side and I never said why do you know why you need to get zero on one side? What we have here is called a quadratic equation. Okay, a quadratic equation. Let me just remind you: if you sol to solve a quadratic equation, which uh, you're supposed to know, which I'm sure most of us have forgotten, to solve a quadratic equation, we have some steps get zero on one side. Two, factor the left hand side usually or the right hand side, whatever, factorize. So so the second step is factor this trinomial. I hope you remember you're starting to remember this. Uh, if not you'll see why we're doing this. Because it'll all work out. You'll see why. So this is the short method, okay? So you gotta have x in the corner, and then find two numbers that multiply to give 18, and add to give negative 11. Write them down. 
Two numbers that multiply to 18 and to negative 11. 18 is, of course, 1 times 18, 2 times 9, 3 times 6. What else? 4, 5, 6. No. So one of those pairs is going to work. I'm looking at 2 and 9. They add to 11, right? So I'm thinking if I have a negative 2 and a negative 9, negative 2 and negative 9 add to negative 11, negative 2 and negative 9 multiply to plus 18. Okay. So a factor is the second step for solving a quadratic equation. And the third step is um, the zero product rule, which goes like this. And let me ask you, can you write, can you tell me the answer? If I had a multiplied by b equal to zero, what could you say about the, ab the value of a and b? So just please ignore this. Just look at this. If a times b equals zero, what, what can you say about a and b? Give me, write a sentence. I want you to write a sentence to, to explain what a and b could be. Do they both have to be zero for this equation to work? Um, can does one of them have to be zero, or can can either of them not be zero? Is it, can they be two numbers that are not zero? If two numbers multiply to give zero, then one of them has to be zero. Isn't that true? So if a times b equals zero, we can say that a or b has to be zero. Or in other words, we can say then either a equals zero or b equals zero. There are two possibilities, right? A is zero or b is zero. Two possibilities. Okay. So what we found so what we have here is x minus two times x minus nine equals zero. Therefore either x minus two is zero, where this is kind of like your a in the zero product rule, and this is kind of like your b. So either that is zero or the x minus nine is zero. Now we have two linear equations and we can solve them easily, right? All you have to do, you see, is add 2 to both sides. And this says that x is 2. And here we add 9 to both sides. And this says that x is 9. So x is 2 or x is 9. Now, I'll just let you know about another common mistake. A lot of people get to here and they say that x is negative 2 or negative 9. Where is their mistake? Why would somebody say that x is negative 2 or negative 9? It's, it's called, like, they're just trying to skip that last step. So you've got to write this line and this line out. If you don't write them out, you'll probably make a mistake. If you write them out like this, you'll find x is positive 2 or positive 9. Not negative 2 or negative 9, positive 2 or positive 9, right? So make sure you write this line out. Okay, so we have two possible solutions to this equation at this point, right? And we need to check both of them. Okay, so I'm going to check the first one. Uh, I need a different color pen. So if I check him in the original equation, it was remember it was x minus five. So x minus five equals square root of x plus seven. And then I'm going to check the other one. X minus five should equal square root of x plus seven. Okay. So this is the original equation, right? Now. Um, okay, so we'll first check x is 2 and then we'll check x is 9. So x is 2, plug that in here and here, right? And this gives me 2 minus 5 is what? $2, take away $5, you're in debt by 3, okay? 2 and 7 is 9. Now root 9 means, oh, I'm not showing you that, sorry. Root 9 means give me the positive root of 9, which is 3, right? And we have negative 3 equals 3. That is not true, is it? So, x equals 2 did not work. So we must discard that. x equals 2 did not work. We're going to throw it in the trash. doesn't work, okay? Now we have to check the other possible solution, which is x equals 9. So what we do is we plug 9 in for x in the original equation. Okay? 
Remember the original equation was x minus 5 equals root of x plus 7. So we plug that in and see what we come up with. 9 minus 5 is 4. 9 plus 7, 16. What's the positive root of 16? 4. So this time when I plug when I plug this solution in, I get the same answer on both sides. So that's why I draw a happy face. This one did work. Okay. So this is a solution. Put a box around it and we have one solution to this equation. The x equals 2 was a possible solution. When I checked it, it did not work out. Right? Because I had negative 3 equals 3. x minus 9 was a possible one until I checked it. It did work out, so it definitely does work, and that definitely is a solution. So I have one solution. Sometimes we'll have two, sometimes we'll have one. It depends on the equation. Okay? So let's have a look at um, this page, and we have x minus 2 equals square root of x plus 4. What I'd like you to do is press pause in the video, try the whole thing yourself, and um, if you get stuck, you can always play the video and see how it's done. Okay? So please press pause and try it yourself, and then I'll do it. And I'm going to do it quickly, so I'd really like you to, to give it a good go all by yourself. Okay? Okay, I'm going to do it now. So the first step is we need to isolate the root when we solve root equations. Uh, just so you know, radical is another word for root, so I don't know why we have two words. I kind of prefer root because they automatically think of this symbol, it just helps me. Uh, uh, hopefully it'll help you too. Anyway, so solve root equations. We, d do we have the, uh, the root isolated? It's all there by itself, right? Second step is we either square or cube both sides depending on what type of root we have. Well, we have a square root, so we need to square that to get rid of it, right? and also I need to square this side. Squaring this root will give me the inside, x plus 4. Okay. There's Students often make a mistake on this. x minus 2 all squared and what they'll write down is something like x squared minus 4 or even x squared plus 4 and both are incorrect. The answer to this is you must take your time and expand it out to make sure that you've got the right answer. Because if you expand that out and then multiply it, you'll see that you know the answer is it's not a quick answer. It takes some calculation to figure out what that is. Okay. X times x is x squared. X times negative two minus two x. Negative two times x minus two x. Negative two times negative two is positive four and these add to give x squared minus 4x plus 4. So the left hand side took a lot of calculation to figure out what it was and that's the way it is with these questions so you gotta watch out. x squared minus 4x plus 4. Okay. Now we have an equation it has an x squared term in it that means it is called an a quadratic equation. To solve quadratic equations we need to first get 0 on one side Okay, and uh, listed those steps in the last question. We have uh, three steps. First, get zero on one side. So, what should we do to get zero on one side? Should we subtract four? Yep, that'll work. Maybe x squared minus four x, and this makes zero equals x. Now what? We could subtract x from both sides, right? Now we'll have x squared and um, this is negative 4x minus 1x. In that $4, subtract $1 and we get, uh, we're in debt by 5, negative 5x. Okay. Now 1x minus 1x is no x's, 0. Okay. So I have 0 on the right hand side this is a quadratic equation. I've got 0 on one side and now I need to factor. How would you factor x squared minus 5x? And I most half the class will probably forget how to do this. In fact, I would say oh three quarters of students would probably forget how to do this. And there's no shame in that. 
It's hard to remember all the different things, but once I remind you, you'll remember them. If you pull out a greatest common factor, what would you get? Pull out a greatest common factor? What's, what goes into x squared and 5x? x, right? If you pull an x out, x times what gives x squared? x times x, right? And x times what gives negative 5x? x times negative 5, right? So x squared minus 5x becomes x times x minus 5. And now we do the zero product rule. If a times b is zero, then a is zero or b is zero. Again, a lot of students get confused on this because it's something you don't see very often. But you consider this guy here to be your a and this guy here to be your b equals zero. So this times this is zero. This times this is zero. Therefore, one of them has to be zero, right? So either x is 0 or x minus 5 is 0 okay so we have well this is just x equals 0 or uh, I can solve this by adding 5 add 5 to both sides and I get x equals negative or sorry positive 5 duh positive 5 okay x equals 5 right so 0 or 5 and now I need to check both solutions into the original original equation which was x minus 2 equals the root of x plus 4 okay so I'll write out the original equation x minus 2 is equal to square root of x plus 4 x minus 2 equals square root of x plus 4 okay and I've got to check both answers, 0 and 5. So I'm going to plug 0 into both into both x, x uh, places here, here and here, right? And then I'm going to plug 5 in for x in the original equation, right? Now just calculate both sides and see if uh, see what works out and what doesn't work out. If I calculate this one, I get 0 minus 2, which is negative 2 and 0 plus 4 is 4 so I have negative 2 equals and this positive root of 4 because this symbol means get the positive root is 2 so I have negative 2 equals 2 that did not work so x equals 0 did not work so I need to discard that possible solution this is not does not work so that is not a solution right what about 5 5 minus 2 is 3 and here 5 and 4 is 9 so I have 3 equals and the positive root of 9 is 3 so I have the same thing on both sides draw a happy face this one did work out x is equal to 5 so I have one solution x is 5 okay one solution Page 7. This example. Uh, by all means, you can try it yourself. Uh, but I'd like you to most of all write it down and just try and get the first step. What do you think we should do first? If you look at what we have to accomplish, we have to get x all by itself. It's going to take some work. And it is a root equation. So I think we would like to isolate the root to begin with, or at least try to. Um, and so this negative 1 is not underneath the root. So one thing we could do, couldn't we just add 1 to both sides? Maybe. That might simplify it, because then we would have that would go away. We would have 4 times root of x minus 2, root 4, 4 times square root of x minus 2 equals x plus 1. These are not like terms. That's x plus 1. Okay. So we're close to what we had earlier. Only for this 4 kind of might confuse you. I don't know. Um, you might be tempted to divide by 4, but I think the easiest thing to do now is to right away square both sides. 
Now this is not an index, this is not the fourth root. This is the number four being multiplied by the square root of x minus two. Okay, this is a, a second root, square root. Okay, so if I square this side, I will get um, four root x minus two times four root x minus two, which is, in fact, four times four times root x minus two times root x minus two. Now, what does four times four give me? 16. And what if I take a root of x minus two and multiply it by another root of x minus two? Isn't that going to give you the same thing? Because you're basically squaring the root, you're multiplying the root times itself. So this times this will just give you x minus 2. So you have 16 times x minus 2. Um, and just as a side note, you might have spotted the fact that if you have 4 times root x minus 2, if you have this situation and you square it, in this case you can stick the squared on everything and get 4 squared times uh, root of x minus 2 squared which gives 16 times x minus 2. But the reason you can distribute the squared is because you have factors inside the parentheses. You have 4 multiplied by x minus 2. And sticking the squared in will not work on this one because you have a plus. You cannot just stick a squared on the x and the 1. Okay. So it works here, but it's it's sticking the square doesn't work. Here. So my my solution to that is to write every. If you're confused, just write everything out. Write this out. Write this out, and then you'll you'll see clearly why this becomes 16 times x minus 2. And on this side, which we have to do now, we'll see what that is for for sure. X plus one all squared. Okay. If I square x plus one, I get x plus one times x plus one, don't I? So calculate that. Write it out and calculate it. That's the only way to make sure you don't make a mistake. x times x, x squared. x times 1, 1x. One, 1 times x, 1x. One, 1 times 1, 1. Add like terms, x squared plus... Two x plus one, right? So I can't just stick the squared and call that x squared plus one squared because I'll be missing out the two x term, won't I? Okay. So x plus one all squared does indeed give x squared plus two x plus one. So we have a little bit of work. Okay, we added one both sides. We have a little bit of work now, and we square both sides. So you're doing great if you get to here, and then you keep solving. Multiply the 16 in, 16x minus 32 equals x squared plus 2x plus 1. And then um, I have an equation. There's an x squared term in it. It's an equation with an x squared term. What type of equation is that called? It's called a quadratic equation. I'm solving a quadratic equation. Okay, I need to get zero on one side, then factor, and so on. So the first step is get zero on one side. So I'm going to get the x squared by itself, by the way, and make sure my x squared stays positive because it's easier to factorize that way. So I'm going to subtract 16x from both sides because I want to keep my x squared as a positive. That gives me negative 32 equals x squared minus 14x plus 1. Now I'm going to add 32 to both sides. Okay, and that gives me 0 equals x squared minus 14x plus 33. So I'm solving the quadratic equation. I've got 0 on one side. Now I need to factor. Can you factor? So um, this again is a short method, right? And um, you've got to put the x in the corner, right? 
So what two numbers multiply to 33 and add to negative 14? 33 is 1 times 33. What else goes into 33? 3 maybe? 3 times what? 3 times 11. 4 doesn't go in, 5 doesn't go in, 6 doesn't go in, 7, 8, 9, 10, back to 11. So these are the two pairs of factors. Can you find two numbers that multiply to positive 33 and add to negative 14? How about a negative 3 and a negative 11? Won't these guys add to negative 14 and multiply to positive 33, right? So we get that. 0 equals this times this. So we're solving the quadratic equation. We're on step 2 is done. We factored it. We have 0 on one side. Now we just need to say if a times b is 0, a is 0, or b is 0, right? So if this factor times this factor equals 0, then either this is 0 or this is 0. So we have to say either x minus 3 is 0 or x minus 11 is 0 and solve each one. Okay. So add 3 to both sides, x equals 3. Add 11 to both sides, x equals 11. So we have x equals positive 3 or x equals positive 11. And we're still not done because we have to check the answer always, especially with these root equations because these are actually just possible solutions. We don't know for sure if they're going to work out or not until we check it in the original equation. Now if you look back at the original equation, it was 4 times root of x minus 2, then subtract 1 equals x, right? So carefully let's rewrite that with parentheses. 4 times root of x minus 2, then subtract 1 equals x, parentheses, right? And write it out for the 3, because we're going to plug 3 in for x, and then we're going to write out for the 11. 4 times root of x minus 2, then minus 1 should equal x, and then we're going to plug 11 in. So we're going to plug 3 in for x and see if it works, then we're going to plug 11 in for x and see if that works, okay? So go ahead and calculate both of these and see what you get. Calculate them. You can press pause if you need more time. I'm going to do it slowly now. 4 times root of and 3 minus 2 is 1. Then minus 1 should equal 3. Root of 1. The square root of 1 is 1. right? So I get 4 times 1 minus 1 equals 3. This gives me 4 minus 1 equals 3. So I get 3 equals 3. That worked. Which means that x equals 3 is a solution x equals 3 works. Okay. Now, let's check x equals 11. I'm getting 4 times root of 11 minus 2 is 9. Then minus 1 should be 11. 4 times, now root 9 is what? 3 minus 1 should be 11. 12, 4 times 3 is 12. Minus 1 equals 11. 12 minus 1, 11 equals 11. Huh, same thing on both sides. Smiley face. This one worked as well. So x equals 3 or x equals 11. How many solutions do I have? How many numbers will solve the equation? 1, 2. So what I have are two solutions. Just to, to summarize this, I have x equals 3 or 11. I guess you can put it in, you know, 3, comma 11, two solutions, right? x equals 3 or x equals 11, right? So, last example, I'd like you to press pause, do this whole thing yourself, and then check the video. Now, uh, you most likely will make a mistake on this. This is difficult for this level because you know there's a lot of things that we need to remember how to do to get through this. So do not be hard on yourself if you don't get it. Um, 
hopefully you'll be able to get a couple out on the homework and uh, that's what we have videos for to help you through it. Okay? So the first thing we do is try to isolate the root and what I like to do is look at this, look, negative 3 and that is not underneath the root at all. See that? So the easiest thing to do is just add 3 to both sides so now you have 3 times root of x plus 1 is equal to, and these are not like terms, so you got to write x plus 3. Okay. Now some people at this point divide by 3 on both sides. I think that makes things more complicated because you end up with fractions over here, like x over 3 and stuff like that. I like to square at this point. I just found it to be the easiest thing to do. And now I have to be very careful about how to calculate the squares on both of these sides. But I use the same procedure for each. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write out what 3 times root x plus 1 times 3 root x plus 1 would give me. And on the right hand side I'm going to write out what is x plus 3 times x plus 3. And if I calculate the left and right hand side you know, carefully like this. I'll make sure I don't make a mistake. Okay, the way you're going to make mistakes in algebra is assuming it is a certain thing that you think it is, and then then you can't even check your work. I mean, because you, you, you've guessed. So don't guess. Write things out, calculate them, see what happens. Okay. If I write this out and calculate it, I can rewrite. I can write it as three times three. See, times root x plus one times root x plus one. Now, what does that give? 3 times 3 gives 9. Root x plus 1 times root x plus 1. A root times a root, if it's the same thing, doesn't that give the x, the inside? But of course I must put parentheses around it because it's its own, you know, thing. So it's this times this. So 9 times x plus 1. And on this one, you've got to do what a lot of people call the FOIL method, or distribute property basically x times x, x squared, x times 3, 3x. 3 times x, 3x, 3 times 3, 9. Add like terms and I get x squared plus 6x plus 9. So my point is when you wrote it out, both of the squares, this times this and then this times this, you may have a you'll have a much better chance of getting the correct thing on both sides because you wrote it out and you calculated it carefully okay so instead of guessing instead of trying to stick the squared in on top of things like here and here that is where you'll make mistakes if you write out it should work out okay okay so now we have an equation with an x squared in it it's called a quadratic equation if you're at this point on the video please press pause and try and finish it yourself okay then I'll do it Okay, I'll do it now. So I'm going to multiply the 9 in to get 9x plus 9. It's a quadratic equation, so I need to get 0 on one side. right? I'll go ahead and subtract 9x from both sides for one thing. That'll give me 9 equals x squared, and I put it with like terms, minus 3x plus 9. Then I'll go ahead and subtract 9 from both sides. Now, something where people mess up on this is, look, the equal sign stays underneath it, itself all the time, right? What is 9 minus 9? What does that give you? It gives you a number. We have a number for that. What is that number? It doesn't just disappear. That number is 0, okay? 9 minus 9 here goes away. So you, have to, you should write x squared minus 3x is equal to 0. Okay, a lot of people at this point, for some reason or another, they don't write down 0 and they end up with x squared is equal to 3x. Do you know what I mean? I don't know if you've made that mistake, but that's a common error. So anyway, you should have this. If you have this, you're fine. Otherwise, please note what happened. We subtracted 9, we got 0, and it all works out, right? Okay, so we have a quadratic equation. An equation with x squared. We have 0 on one side. The next step is to factor. We had a list of uh, of steps for solving quadratic equations, which was supposed to be covered in the last class. 
but we most of us forgot, and so we went over it again. Anyway, we need to factor this. x squared minus 3x is... And if you have an x squared term and an x term, the only thing you can do to factor it is actually pull out a common factor, a greatest common factor. And the greatest common factor there is, in fact, x. So x times x gives x squared. x times negative 3 gives negative 3x. And we have 0 on that side. Then we can do the zero product rule. If two things multiply to zero, one of them has to be zero, right? So if this times this equals zero, then either x is zero or x minus three is zero, which gives us two possible solutions. Either x is zero or add three to both sides x is 3. So x is 0 or 3. And because we're solving a root equation, we have to check. So we look at the very first equation that we were trying to solve, which was 3 times root of x plus 1 minus 3 equals x. Okay, And this minus 3 is not underneath the root. Okay, So we check that. 3 root of x, parentheses, plus 1, okay? Then subtract 3 should equal to x. And we check 0 in for x in both sides of the equation. Remember, there's x on the right hand side. And then do it for the other one. 3 times x plus 1 minus 3 equals x, okay? So we plug 3 into both sides as well. So then check both sides, see what you get. I'll check this one. And please, by all means, press pause and, and continue from here. But press pause and just finish the question from here, right? Okay, I hope, I hope you've tried it. I'm going to do it now. This is 3 times root. Now 0 plus 1 is 1. Root 1 minus 3 equals 0. Root 1 is 1. So I have 3 times 1 and then minus 3 equals 0. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 minus 3 equals 0. That is true. 0 equals 0. Same thing on both sides. Smiley face. x equals 0 did work. We plugged it in and it worked. So that is one solution. Now let's check x equals 3. See if it works. So 3 plus 1 inside the root gives me 4. So I have this. Uh, root 4 is 2. So 3 times 2 minus 3 should equal 3. 3 times 2 is 6. And 6 minus 3 is 3. So I have 3 on both sides. Draw a smiley face. When I plug x is 3, the whole thing worked out. This works. Okay. So x equals 0 or x equals 3. I do indeed have two solutions. So if I want to write a little summary, I have two solutions. x equals 0 or 3. 0 comma 3. 0 or 3, right?